If he really cares about your Olam Abba, which is what a true friend is all about, he can tell you, no, you're going totally the wrong way. You're reading the map totally incorrectly over here. It's, you're being affected by your emotions. You're being affected wherever you get your podcasts from or our own website, prismoftorah.com. This is The Prism of Torah with Rabbi Saf Aaron Prisman. This week, Parshas Vayechi. Why do Chesed? Shalom to everyone. In this Parsha, Parshas Vayechi, I want to share with you a beautiful vote with a deep idea that I heard by our Rosh Yeshiva, Yeshiva Sochaim at the time, Rabbi Vishai David, who's actually a local Rav over here in Ramat Pechemish. And he gave me a sefer he wrote that this Dval Torah is from that sefer. And I spoke to him about it also, I had some questions. And it's all by the name of Rav Yehuda Leib Kagan Zatzal. We know that Yaakov Avinu realizes he's about to pass away, and hence he calls his son, Yosef, to come over to him. And his request is, please, do with me chesed shel emes. Those are the two words we want to dwell upon, which literally means true kindness, and ensure that I don't get buried in Egypt, but rather with my father's. The Midrash Rabbah that Rashi quotes tells us, and is bothered with this idea, what is this chesed shel emes? What does this mean? There's chesed, that's sheker chesed, and there's chesed of emet? What's going on? And the answer of the Midrash Rabbah is, im taseli chesed l'achar mitati, when you do a chesed for someone after he passes away, which conceptually speaking means something to do with his burial, that is chesed shel emes. Rashi explains to us a bit more, why? Why is that? Because it's evident that you're not asking for anything back. And that is true chesed. The question that can be asked, it seems like the only occurrence of true chesed is w- with a person that passed away. However, if you look through Torah Nevim Ksuvim, you'll see many, many examples or instances the same term of chesed ve'emes is used. And yet it's not talking about anyone that passed away. I'll just share some of them with you. We, th- we see this with Eliezer thinking on Kodesh Burchu, that he said, Lo azav chasdo v'amito, that, he, that Hashem did chesed ve'emes with him to help him find a wife for Yitzchak so fast. And Eliezer again says that to the family of Rivka, that you did with me chesed ve'emes with my, with my uh, master, with Avrom. Also Yaakov says the same thing before he gets together with Esav, Katonti mikol chasidim u mikol emes. And we see the same thing in Yud Gimel Midois, Erech Apayim V'Av Chesed Ve'emes. And the main instance that I want to share with you is we know the famous episode with Rochov, the Zoyna, when the Meraglim, led by Yeshua, Yeshua sends them, and Rochov saves them and hides them in her house. So over there, the Meraglim say to her, and we will do with you Chesed Ve'emes. That's the Lashon there. Because we know they're going to tell her to put a red string from her window and they're going to ensure no one there dies when they come to capture the city. al Kaupani, we see many, many instances of Dafka, this idea of Chesed Ve'emes, or Chesed Shel Emes. Truthful Chesed with Chaim, not with Misim, not with people that, are, that have passed away. So what's going on? To make things a bit more complicated, there's a famous Midrash that screams out that Chesed and Emes are actually opposing forces or very contradictory. Amar Rabbi Simon, B'Sha'ah Sheba HaKadosh Buchu, right before HaKadosh Buchu wanted to create Adam Arishon, so the Melachei Asheres went into groups, and some of them said, create the human person, create Adam Arishon, and some say, said not. And this is based on the Pasuk that says, Chesed Ve'emet Nifkashu, so one were representing, one group of Melachim were representing Emes, one was representing Chesed. Chesed screaming out, Yes, create, do chesed, and create the human being, create Adam Elishon. And Emmet says, no, he's full of lying, he's going to lie, it's not worth to, to create him. So what did HaKadosh Baruch do? He took Emmet, put her on the floor, that's what it says in the Pasuk later on, Vatishlach Emmet Arza, the Melachi Asharitz said to HaKadosh Baruch how can you do that? Emes is yours. How can you put it on the floor? And then, Ta'ale Emes min Aretz, and then it says in the Pasuk, Emes Meretz Titzmach. And indeed it came up. It screams out this idea that Emes was a opposing force of Chesed. So how can it be together? How can we see terms in the, in the Chumash, in the Tanakh, that they're together? Chesed ve'emes. 
So Rav Kagan Zatzal wants to answer based the Rambam writes in Morin Vuchim. He brings down that some big Chacham asked him a Shaila and he says, how can it be that a person does a sin and he out of that gets rewarded? For example, Adam Arishon, Adam Arishon was told in Chava not to eat from Eitz Hadas Toivara. And at the end, what happened? They did eat. After that, they became, it seems to be, smarter. Like HaKadosh Baruch Hu, they were able to know the difference between Tov and Ra. So he asked the question, how can it be? It sounds like Adam Rishon at the beginning was supposed to be, from a certain perspective, like the other creatures, that he don't, doesn't know so much between good and bad, and he just goes the way he lives the way he lives. But then, after that sin, suddenly he got a mind, he was able to realize that he was naked and it wasn't appropriate, and he was embarrassed. How can it be? Thanks to the sin, they got this idea of this mind, they got moyach, like we spoke about last, last week. How, how does that make sense? So the Rambam says in Malin Luchim, listen carefully to my answer, it's very important to understand this concept. And there is a mistake in the question. Even though it's a good question to be asked, but there's a mistake in the question. He's assuming that they got rewarded, and he's assuming that Adam Rishon and Chava, from before, as they were created, they didn't usually really have a mind. But he says that's not true. It's quite the opposite. As they were created, the way Hashem created them is that it would be clear to them what's emes and what's shekel. And hence, they were always inclined to choose the truth. It was so obvious to them. So it wasn't even a shayla. So there wasn't true prira. It was so easy. Almost there was no true prira because obviously there was prira at a certain level because they failed that they, in the fact that they ate from the it's a das, that many Mepharshim ask, how, how did the Nachash get in there? How was he able to affect them? It was so clear to them what was Emes and what was not. But at the end of the day, he persuaded them and they saw that it was Tov La'inaim. And once they sinned, the whole Mitzvah, the whole reality of the world changed. Of, and Adam and Chava now, instead of everything was objective. And this is exactly the Russian the Rambam uses in Monavuchim. It was objective, it was it was obvious what was right and what was wrong, and they always chose the right because it was obvious. Now, everything became gray. It wasn't black and white anymore. Everything was vivid because they were affected in the ways we spoke last week by their emotions, by their negias, by all kinds of other surrounding subjective things that affected their opinion. And hence, to get to the truth, of what really HaKadosh Baruch wants you to choose, it's not so easy anymore, as we can all witness upon ourselves today. That is the Mitzis we live in. And that's going to be the Avoida we learn from this, from this Dvar Torah, from this Moren Nebuchim. Our Avoida is to ensure we remove all those layers of Negius, of our emotions affecting us, of our Taivas affecting us. Like we said last week, it's represented by the Lev and by our Moyach. And that's why our avoida is not only to know in our mind what the right thing to do is, which is an avoida in itself, but also we have to affect our hearts as well to always go in the right derech. And we need to use the tools Hashem gives us in this world to be able to reach that correct destination, which is a good friend, like Rabbi Niyan explains, based on Pirkei Avos, it says, You need to have a Rav that really knows you and... And sometimes a friend suffices for that, because he can, if he really cares about Yerayel Amaba, which is what a true friend is all about, he can tell you, no, you're going totally the wrong way. You're reading the map totally incorrectly over here. It's, you're being affected by your emotions. You're being affected by your taiva, whatever it is. Close the brackets, back to the Moren Nivuchim. The Moren Nivuchim is telling us that what happened after Adam Arishon, and that's what the words Toi Vera symbolize. Before it was Emes Vashekel, after they ate suddenly there was Nagiyas. And that's exactly why they were embarrassed. Because suddenly you can look at the body in more than one way. Taibas are getting affected, they're embarrassed. Suddenly they realized, because they saw a different perspective before, a body, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. A body is a tool that you use for Avoid Hashem. It was so clear. Why should you be embarrassed about it? What's that different than your mouth? But then, because all these external, subjective, subjective uh, reasoning came into play, then suddenly they were embarrassed. It wasn't so clear-cut like it was before. Just to summarize the concept before we move on, Emes Vashekir is totally mind-driven. Muskalut, totally by the mind. And it's absolute, and it's black or white. But then after they ate and they sinned, now it wasn't black and white anymore. 
It was Yoide Toivara, and therefore Vatipakachna in Eishneim, their eyes opened, they suddenly started reasoning or trying to convince themselves. This, that, everything changed. Now, what does this have to do with us? What's Chesed Shel Emes and Chesed of Shekel? The answer to that is if you were to ask yourself, why do I do Chesed? If you're honest with yourself, probably the most common answer would be because I see there's another Jew in need, I want to help him out. Sometimes because you want to get paid back by him in a certain way. But even if you do it for the reason that he's, you feel like you want to help someone out because he's lacking something, that's not really chesed shil emes. That's not for the real reason. The real reason and the most correct reason that a person should do chesed is based on the Gemara and Soita, Dafyud Dalet, Amud Aleph, that our whole name of the game over here is to get close to Hashem, to try to mimic Him as much as possible. Do what He tells us to do. And that all comes from the two words, Ve'alachto bidrochov. We want to go in the ways of Hashem, which means we want to also mimic His midos as much as we can, which one of them is chesed. But we want to do it for that reason. Even for the reason of, oh, I see a yid is at need. It might be a nice idea and very... But at the end of the day, it's not true chesed. True chesed, I'm doing it because HaKadosh Baruch Hu is me. Yes, yes. HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants me to work on my emotions that I care for another yid. But the real core, root reason should be, I want to be as much as I can like HaKadosh Baruch Hu's midas, and I want to be like him. Mahu rechum afatarachum. If that's the reason you're doing chesed, then you are doing chesed shalemis. How do we know if you're doing it for that reason? Usually the most classic way of knowing is because you're not looking for anything to get back out of it. Even when you do chesed because you feel someone's missing out on something, you feel a self of accomplishment, ah, I gave him something. But you should do it because Hashem is telling you to do it. And that is true chesed, chesed shil emes. The classic way of knowing that was the reason you did it is because you're helping someone that's already dead. He can't pay you back. So when you see, like Rashi says, chesed shil emes is we're not, you're, getting, you're not getting anything back. That's the biggest gilui. That's the best way to reveal to us that you really did it unconditionally just because you want to do chesed for the sake of chesed because Hashem does chesed and Hashem told you to do chesed and you want to be like a Kaddish Bochu. And that is the level of true chesed. So it can come out that even if you do chesed with someone that already passed away, but if in the back of your mind you're saying, oh, now his family is going to be nicer to me, that also is chesed shel shekel. It's not chesed shel emes. There's probably different levels, but the best level of chesed is truthful chesed shel emes. With this idea, we can see an unbelievable mahalach in that episode I mentioned earlier with Rachav. Because if you look in the psukim over there, she tells them, I did with you chesed, and you too do with me chesed. And they answer back, we will do for you chesed ve'emes. Because she did chesed to them by hiding them, by hiding the spies. But she knew in the back of her mind, and then they're going to help me. So that's not chesed shil emes, that's chesed with their own reasoning. But they didn't really need to help her out anymore, but they wanted to. Because of chesed. Chesed shil emes. That's because they wanted to go in the ways of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Chesed shil emes. And even if you say the reason they did it is to pay her back, but that's also um, something we learn about HaKal Satov. That's something HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants us to do. So it's all pure chesed. Also the Maral Miprag says on this idea, Nechoinim hem belo pikbu, ki bevadai shayach lomar, it's relevant to say chesed ve'emes in anything, if it's chesed, and emes, only if it's true, true chesed, like we're saying. Carefully in the Ramban, the Ramban in Nitzavin, in Dvorim, Perik Lamed Pasuk Vav, says that in the future, when Mashiach comes, in times of Mashiach, we're also going to go back to how it was before Chet Adam Rishon, which everything will be clear to us. We'll see what's right and what's wrong. Anir Atzon, that we'll aspire to get to that stage. We have to work on ourselves on our day-to-day nisiyonis, when we do anything, especially chesed, which is what we're talking about right now, we have to remove all the subjectiveness involved, get a friend, a rav, that will help us find what the true objective is, in any, every case, i.e. objectively, to know what the emes is, just like we're talking about here in chesed, and that is chesed shel emes. So yes, you, should ha- you can have chesed shel emes even with people that are alive, like we saw all those examples, but you have to ensure that you're doing it for the right reason. Just want to end up. There's a, fa- a famous 
הרב סורוצקין שליטה, who has yeshivas here in Chadorim, and one time, there's a video of it, maybe I'll send you the link when I send the email to everyone, that he went with the help of his, and he went to Rav Steinman Zatzal, to ask him a shayla, he said, listen, there's a person, I don't know if there's so much team for our cheder, do, do you think we have to accept them or not? What, what do you think? He goes, I don't understand. Why not? Why not accept them? Ah, maybe they're not matim. I saw the way they look. They're not 100% like Art Sibu. So Steinman, at one point, he goes, so what? So then you, you'll send them to another hater and then that hater will, 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 will uh, kick them off? So Steinman said, I understand. Where are they going to end up? They're not going to have a place. Every hater will bounce them to another hater. And then he said, no, he dafka wants our cheder, probably other cheders will accept him. At some point, Ersteinman cut him off and it says, and he said in a very strong voice, relatively to his voice, it's gaiva, it's gaiva, it's gaiva. <laughs> Meaning, it has to do with gaiva. You're totally not reading the map black and white. Emes and Shekir. No, because what you're saying now is not the right thing. You're, it's being affected by your subjectiveness and it's coming from a bad place. Rav Stein was able to pick up on it straight away. Yiratzon that will know who to approach to help us. Many times in our crazy generation, the Nisyonis won't be if we fail to succeed, but rather if, we're, if we choose the right people to help us with our issues and help strive for the truth. Because in this convoluted world that we live in, it's not so easy to do ourselves. Yeah, let's all be zoichi, we'll have siyad adishmaya, tavning tako dishbuchu is part of this hishtadlus, that we'll be able to always, not only realize what the truth is, but also choose the truth, just like chesed shel emes. And that's perhaps what Yaakov Avinu was trying to teach us, and teach Yosef and future generations when he said, please do with me chesed shel emes. Have a good job. Thank you for joining us. This is the Prism of Torah. Visit our website, prismoftorah.com, where you'll find a full archive of hundreds of past every Torah. Subscribe to the podcast, leave us a review, and don't forget to share with your friends and family. Sponsorship opportunities are available for all of our episodes. Thank you, Yonavefa, for your recording equipment. Produced by Ellie Podcast Productions.